So after playing the demo for Leica Age Through Blood, I decided to talk about it for a little bit, just due to how strongly I felt about it by the end. It is a western inspired Mad Max feeling Motorvania set in a post-apocalyptic desert about a tribe at war with another as they are outnumbered 100 to 1. We follow Leica, a vengeful coyote gunslinger, fighting to take back what her people lost, as she battles her own grief and supernatural abilities regarding it along the way. Drive, drift, ramp, shoot, and battle your way through a huge hand-drawn world filled with many different biomes and even more emotions. Your best friend is your bike, the horse to your western, capable of blocking bullets and saving you from peril at a moment's notice. It's your main traversal tool as well, getting you from point A to point B faster than you can say yeehaw. Besides the defense of the bike, you have the offense of weapons such as guns and crossbows. You can also parry and reflect bullets to really save your bacon in the last minute. You can't do these things at any moment's notice though. Your weapons have to be loaded and your parry has to be charged which are both triggered by certain types of flips on your bike. This implementation adds to the challenge as well as adds a layer of strategy that the standard run and gun formula wouldn't necessarily have. The movement feels really fluid and is heart pounding when you pull off every action just right to eliminate a group of enemies. The enemies in the demo don't vary too much, with a boss that's not very challenging and easy to master. Given that it's a demo though, I can practically guarantee that it'll be improved on in the full game. And if I'm provided a review code, we'll let you know soon if I was right or not. There isn't any voice acting, the dialogue is text based, but if you're like me, it's a lot of fun coming up with the voices yourself and the dialogue does a really good job giving you idea of what each character may sound like. It really does a good job building immersion along with the world building, and there are some really Really good cutscenes that are fully animated and have some great transitions from one scene to the next. It is almost seamless how you can go from gameplay to cutscene at times. The story so far is really good, jam packed with emotions and even has some good twists as well. The characters are well realized, easily differentiated from one another, although some take obvious influence from games like Hollow Knight for example. The map works works the same way as Hollow Knight as well, with you gaining access to it as you buy from a merchant. But I truthfully never really use the map at all. The game differentiates its locations enough for me, again, so far, that you can figure out where you're going by eyesight alone. The currency is collected by defeating enemies, and whenever you die, you leave some behind, having to recover it at your death location. It's far more forgiving than a Souls-like game though, so don't worry about the difficulty spiking because of this. In fact, I believe it's working rather well how it is. The music has been superb so far as well, with some extremely atmospheric instrumentals to a heart-wrenching vocal performance that really hammers home the scene it's a part of. I've absolutely adored the first few songs in the soundtrack. I hear it Something lost in me. 
When it comes to what you can spend the credits on, you can use them to upgrade your weapons, buy new weapons, buy uh, certain crafting materials, I haven't made it to what we're actually crafting yet, buy food and other items that will give certain things buffs or can be used in other manners, buy upgrades for weapons, increase ammo count, stuff like that. Since this is the demo, I haven't got to spend a lot of time doing any of that, but I think it's really cool that we have this many options and only one thing to really worry about until crafting comes into play, instead of us being overloaded with a million different types of currency for a million different things. All in all, with this impression of Leica, I truly believe that it is a game that you should at least keep your eye on. And although I can't recommend the full game to you yet, I can say that if this is a game that looks like it's up your alley, and you've got some money to spare, it will definitely be worth giving a shot. And if you just want to check out the demo and you're wondering if that's any fun, the demo even has some pretty good replayability as well. Another thing I didn't mention is another thing that is pretty much like the Souls genre, is whenever you want to save, you have to make it to these totem pole light looking things, and that's how you go about it. It is basically a bonfire system that you've seen in, again, Souls-like games. But they come up regularly and they don't feel like they're there to hinder your progress in any way. Whenever you die in a boss fight, you're going to respawn in that boss fight one way or the other. You don't have to backtrack and go a million miles to where you've already been a million times every time that you die. It is a very forgiving system and it is extremely gracious in that regard. Another thing that I forgot to mention is that there is a bullet time mechanic in this game as well. Whenever you are in the air or even just driving, driving on the ground in general, if you hold a certain button, you go into bullet time mode. Bullet time mode is time. You don't have all the time in the world to aim that pistol where you want to aim. But it does give you ample opportunity to line up your shots since when you first start out, your pistol only holds two rounds and you're going to have to conserve ammo when you can. Bullet time mode in this game is also extremely satisfying, especially when you barely use it. Like if you got it on for one second, just enough that you can glance at the screen for a second longer and fire and it almost looks instantaneous like you never used it to begin with. That is a whole lot of fun and I really love that. Also, using bullet time mode not just to shoot, but also to position your bike to block bullets from one direction as you're shooting in the other. Oh man, that really gets your heart pumping. That is a lot of fun. And I absolutely adore the way that they went about putting this bullet time in the game and making it feel like it actually should be there. There is some gore in the game and some very visceral details explained in the text, and you can see bits and pieces of it even with the art style that the game is going with. It's nothing that should affect most people, but if reading about it will make you visualize it, you may want to consider that before getting the game. Given the fact that this was completely unscripted, I don't know if I missed anything or not, but I hope I didn't, and I just wanted to bring it to your attention, so that's about it. For more news, reviews, and whatever we choose, stay tuned to Nerdsfeed. Have a great day, and let me know if you're gonna play this game. Thank you!